Hey all, Scott here. You know what I love about video games? Connecting a controller, parental control, airplane mode, screen burn-in reduction, auto sleep. And that's it. It's a brand new console. Wanna play a game? No! You ever just turn on a game console, stare at the menu screen and not know what to do? Playing a game takes a lot of work. I just turn on my Xbox to give my thumb something to do for five minutes, keep them stimulated. It's like, I get the feeling that I'm bored, but I'm too bored to have a preference of what to do with that boredom, and I have too many choices of what game to play, so I just end up not playing anything. But see, some game consoles have you covered. If you need to wean your thumbs, why not nurse them on system settings? Hopefully there's nobody living inside this thing. Pre-installed software. It's like an activity book for elderly children. See, originally, if you turn on your game system without a game in it, you'd get... <laughs> I thought I was gonna see a clock. But now you get a fancy-ass menu. <laughs> sure, it now takes longer to enter a game. What used to take a flick of a switch takes a few more button presses and far more self-doubt. But having a menu system actually allows us to have far more options than ever before. Internet connections, setting up calendars, holy f***. But of course, these are mainly just options. What about applications included just for fun? Yeah, opening up the Nintendo DS and seeing a little option called PictoChat, you could draw whatever you want in crotches. And the Nintendo 3DS upped the ante quite a bit, featuring full-on minigames to play that were just automatically included on the system. You didn't have to download or install anything. You could play Face Raiders, AR games, Street Pass, and on top of that, you had other features like a camera, an audio recorder, or even this little thing where you could write your own notes. It was nuts. However, the system with a menu setup and pre-installed software I remember the most fondly will always be the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Wii is a close second. This thing had such a fun menu to explore back in the day, mostly due to the Wii channels it housed. Uh, calling them channels was definitely to make them feel more like TV stations and to give us a false sense of security, but these were applications for the Wii, and this was one of the first game consoles to have a cavalcade of pre-installed goodies to sniff, which made productivity a bitch. I got places to be, but that damn forecast channel's calling my name! Oh. So when we turn the Wii on, we're greeted to... I never read this. Warning, health and safety. Before playing, read your operations manual for important information about your health and safety. Wow, I never would've known! Is this really necessary every time you boot up the console? I mean, yes, it's I don't want to get sued necessary if somebody decided I didn't see a warning screen, I'm gonna eat my fucking Wii. But actually reading this text, it says nothing. Hey, here's a warning about your health and safety. Read about your health and safety. And thus, it's time to hit the A button to proceed. I'm home. This is the Wii menu. It's got the rounded rectangles and the static, the music that's not really music, the button orbs. Oh, f it's got one of those. The Wii menu is an excellent user interface. Just by looking at it, you know exactly what it's thinking. Many game consoles at the time had UIs that were, I don't know, honestly, a bit confusing. I mean, once you start fiddling around with them, you get it, but the Wii was instantly understandable while maintaining some depth. But you know what I never liked? This little section. Of course, standing here, it looks fine. Nice even. But then when we go between the different screens, like, am I the only one that thinks this animation looks weird? Like the perspective of where this section is in relation to this section makes me squirm. To those who said, gosh, I wish Scott bitched more. Well, there you go, I don't like the shape. Each Wii channel is supposed to represent a television channel. Uh, kind of like you're in a studio or a security office with a bunch of TVs on at once. Empty slots for more channels have the Wii static, and if you want to customize where things are, just grab an existing channel with the A and B buttons and join the resistance. I always like the stock setup though. The disc channel, me channel, photo channel, shop channel, in that order. Well, let's go through all of these, starting with the disc channel. No. Discs? Who would have thought? And they're mobile! This is what we select to play whatever game's in the Wii. Now, of course, for the Wii models with GameCube slots, we see a GameCube disc thrown in the mix. I like when it reads the disc, we see him spin, and if it doesn't read it, we get a really nice f*** you. When a Wii disc loads up, they almost always have these fun splash screens with music and an animation on the Wii menu itself. But it always bummed me out that with the GameCube games, they play the little GameCube startup jingle and show the logo, but it's not animated. Like, come on, you couldn't show the full GameCube startup animation here? It's also crazy annoying how if you want to play a GameCube game, you can't control the Wii menu with a GameCube controller. You have to use a Wii remote to select the disc channel and then swap over to the GameCube controller to play the game. There's no reason for this. If you plug a class controller into the Wii remote, you can control the menu with just the analog sticks. Why can't you do that with the GameCube controller? The disc channel is the one! First. Of course, with models of the Wii that don't feature GameCube support, the Wii disc is all by itself here. Again, f this channel. Well, let's see if whatever's to the right of this thing can top it. 
is this a revolt? The Me Channel, easily one of the biggest wastes of time to ever indulge in. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. So first up, the Me name is brilliant, flipping over a portion of the Wii name to make something completely different. Now you could flip the other half, but I don't know what a screaming W is gonna do for you. A Me is a virtual representation of a you. With the Me Channel, we have limitless possibilities to make our Me look like our Me as long as the mount doesn't go bigger than this. The Mead Channel was a game in itself. Sure, it really was nothing more than a simple character creator, but with how social and accessible the Wii system is, it's just plain fun to sit down with friends and whip up some quick Mees. You can start with a look-alike face, I don't know anybody who did this. But yeah, you can put together the face of your dreams. You can make real life people, real life fake people, or none of the above. One of the most fun things to do is to pick a word and make a me out of it. I really take me making seriously. One of the best compliments somebody could give you is, damn, your me's pretty hot. And when we save the little thing, we can name them, give them a birthday, favorite color, turn on sharing, or mingling as it's called. I never did this either, but if I really cared about the me I made, yes, of course I'm open to polyamory. You can label it as a favorite of yours, which boils down to the color of their pants. Yeah, dad, you're going in the rest of the pile. Now, Tan Dad, that's going in my favorites. All right, final question. Oh, do we want this me to mingle? I swear to God, if I can crossbreed my me's. No, actually, to mingle means you'll let this me go to your friends' me channels and appear in the me parade. What's the me parade? That. So when you save your me, they're blastered in the me plaza, purgatory if you will. You can organize them, grab them by the head, mutilate, or just kill them. It covers all bases. So yeah, we can arrange them alphabetically by favorites, color, gender. We can only have 100 me's, which is pretty bogus, but we can store a me in our Wii remote. That's barbaric. I've never done this. It's definitely so then you can bring your me's over to your friend's Wii by connecting your Wii remote. But making Mies is so quick and easy, I, I just don't see the point. We could send Mies to friends, exactly what I want to receive in the mail, a f***ing person. As previously stated, here's the Me Parade, which is supposed to be this giant conglomerate of Mies you sent to the Me Parade and Mies your friends sent over and all they do is walk and you can speed them up and also give up. But let's not forget you can connect to the Nintendo DS. Now, why would we do that? To use Mies in the four Nintendo DS games that used Mies, of course. To be fair, this feature is far more useful with the Nintendo 3DS. This is how you transfer Miis to that system where it used Miis far more. And after the Wii, most Nintendo systems utilized the little avatars and had their own Mii makers. And while they all had more features and were more robust creation tools than the original Wii application, the Mii Maker peaked on Wii. On the 3DS, that's a handheld. You're in the corner playing that system by yourself. That's no fun to create characters on. The Wii U, not bad, but they separate so much of the creation experience between the TV screen and the gamepad screen. It's not nearly as communal as using the pointer on the Wii. It feels much more like a singular experience. I'm depressed when I make Miis on this system. And then on the Nintendo Switch, so fun. The Wii's Mii Channel has a lot of features that went barely utilized and has quite a few limitations, but it is still, by far, the most fun character creator out there. It has so much personality with the music and the Mii Plaza and the Wii Remote's pointer makes it so intuitive and such a blast to create Mii's with people in the same room. Well, it's gonna take a lot to follow that up. And this is a lot. The Photo Channel. Funny story, the Wii has an SD card slot. Now, what can you do with it? The Photo Channel. So we can import our digital camera or cell phone photos via an SD card, or we can take a look at photos left on the Wii message board. Yeah, the right dot. I loved looking through my Wii message board. I mean, all it pretty much did for me was tell me how long I played my Wii on that day, so at this point it's basically a wall of hieroglyphics. Some games would send a hearty congratulations to the Wii message board for doing things, or you could just straight up send certain pictures to it like your list of accomplishments in Mario Galaxy. You could also use it to send messages to friends. I never learned to do that. I mean, back in the day, my friends and I weren't too keen on swapping Wii info to do this, so I never got to experience a lot of that side of online connectivity. But I still like going on the message board to ask, what the hell am I doing? But those pictures from the message board could double as pictures to abuse in the photo channel. This is honestly such a well done application. I mean, for the time, being able to show off any photos or videos on an SD card on your TV like this was pretty wild. You can even play a slideshow with all the photos with all different kinds of music, including your own. I know what I'm doing at my funeral. Oh my my god, the fun option? We can add some filters here and go in and doodle all over it. If we move the Wii remote closer and farther away from the sensor bar, we can increase and decrease our brush size. And stickers and scissors and a nuke, this is basically a new version of Mario Paint from the Super Nintendo. In fact, many elements of the photo channel are direct references to that old game. And then we can create a puzzle out of our photo, which is just a blast to do with images like this.
give me a second on this one. I love the photo channel. It was such a fun way to experience your photos. You know what wasn't a fun way to experience your photos? The Wii Shop channel. The worst photo experience on Wii. What's better than the photo channel? Nothing, but on the Wii Shop channel, we can download even more Wii channels. If it were 2009. Yeah, that's an issue with a fair amount of Wii channels now. They require the internet to not only download them to your Wii system, but also access. And with most of the Wii's internet access being shut down, we're a little thing I like to call f***ed. Thankfully, I have a wonderful thing called the time capsule with old footage of the Wii Shop channel on it. Yeah, this is great. The Wii Shop channel let us purchase and download classic virtual console games, brand new downloadable only WiiWare games, and obviously, more Wii channels. Most of the downloadable Wii channels were free of charge, though some cost a small fee. Specifically, the internet channel, a surefire way to browse the internet on the Wii. So let's get down to it. I bought a used Wii off of eBay that I clearly saw still had various Wii channels loaded onto it. If you boot up Wii mode on a Wii U, for some reason they got rid of access to the photo channel and on my old personal Wii, I don't have a lot of these old channels anymore for some reason. This one had all kinds of goodies on it, like the internet channel, or at least a trial version of it. This would cost you 500 Wii points, or 5 US dollars. Was it worth it? Who pays for a web browser? I believe eventually it went full-blown free, but I remember paying for it, and at the time, it was pretty cool. Much like viewing photos on the TV, viewing the Google homepage, now that was magical. It wasn't a very powerful browser, nor was it good. But it did the job. YouTube worked on it, and back in 2008, that was one of the few ways to watch online video on your TV. But the thing is, browsing the internet with the Wii was a total gimmick. It was just a neat little novelty, which didn't make a ton of sense. The only things you could really do on the internet channel was go on websites like Wikipedia or CNN. You couldn't do fun things like play Flash games or use more elaborate websites. Which at that point, why use your Wii to browse the web if you can't do fun internet stuff on it? You were basically limited to reading articles. So why not use your computer? To be fair, various sites were created with the internet channel's limitations in mind, and with those, you could play simple games, listen to music, watch videos outside of on YouTube. There was still a decent amount you could do with this channel. Now, is it usable today? No, and surprisingly, yes. The internet's aged a lot in the past 10 years, and most web pages are too much for the internet channel to handle. I mean, even back then, they were too much for the internet channel to handle. I can't tell you how many times I got this out of memory error, not only now, but back in the day. You just have to keep reloading and hope for the best. However, it still does technically work if you throw it a softball. I was able to go on Google. And next up, we have channels that need no introduction. The Forecast Channel. The News Channel. Okay, news and forecasts are no more. No wonder nothing's happened the past few years. These two channels were preloaded on my original Wii when I first got it, and they- They what? They what? Gave news and weather forecasts. Good. See, ever since summer of 2013, Wii Connect 24 was discontinued. This was a feature of the Wii which allowed it to continuously connect to the internet while in standby mode. Basically letting the forecast and news channels update, allowing you to receive messages from friends, getting system updates, all that. I never knew the blue light that would pulsate from the disk slot was letting me know I received a message. Well, you'd think that means we can't access these Wii channels anymore. Wrong! We can access them with a hacked Wii! So we can't access them. Yes, you were looking at the one-time champion of too f***ing stupid to use a hacked Wii. Listen, I wanted to play Wii Dare, it was a European game, so I hacked my Wii, tried to load it through that, it would get past the Ubisoft logo, freeze, I ended up just buying a European Wii U. If I can't do something as simple as play a European game, how do you expect me to play something that doesn't technically exist anymore? Well, I can sure as I'll try, there's a fan continuation of Wii Connect 24 called ReConnect 24. Let me see if I can handle this. I can just look at old footage. The Forecast Channel! gave you the weather, you could check out this globe, and the overall user experience was quite detailed for a simple weather forecast. These Wii channels are almost like precursors to smartphone apps, but in many ways, they're just as feature rich, if not more so. I mean, look at the news channel. Yep, that's the news. Similarly to the forecast channel, it uses the same globe you can spin around to find what's happening around the world, and even put together a slideshow of the biggest articles. These two channels aren't nearly as fun as the others, but serve their purpose, and if Nintendo really wanted to hit home that these applications were channels for whatever reason, it just made sense to have news and weather incorporated. But what about the election? The Everybody Votes channel was a channel all about polls and it still works. I mean, it would be updated with new polls to participate in all the time, but now all it can do is read back data from polls you previously took part in. Like I said, this was a used Wii I bought, so I can use this to get some insight into the past owners. Like, find out how long they think they can hold their breath. I, I won't look, I'll respect their privacy. Well, if the Everybody Votes channel is usable, what about the Check Me Out channel? 
It's not even downloaded. Why do these people download everybody votes but refuse to download Check Me Out? This channel really took the idea of people making really elaborate Mii's and ran with it, letting people upload their Mii's for others across the world to download to their own console and also participate in Mii contests. I downloaded a couple from back in the day. These two channels were neat little distractions, but I only used them a couple of times. There's only so many hundred ways a Mii can wow me, and after voting on a few polls, I kind of just stopped caring. But then there was the Nintendo Channel, a channel dedicated to showing off trailers for Wii and Nintendo DS games and even offer demos for Nintendo DS games you could beam to the hand of which was crazy. I played the demo for personal trainer cooking that way. Because I just didn't know if it was for me. Plus Nintendo hosted their own show on the service called Nintendo Week. I mean again for the time having all these videos available via your Wii console was really cool. But how do you do it? Well, Nintendo preloaded the Wii Plus Internet channel on some Wiis, showing the benefits of connecting it online. I never had this channel on my Wii, but it just so happened to only be a four minute long video where you'd entered it and that exact video is available on this promotional DVD I have. Thank God I was gonna fucking blow it. Did you know you can connect your Wii console to the internet? Yep! It's just a simple infomercial on pretty much everything we just talked about. Is it worth getting pissed about if it was never preloaded on your Wii? Yeah, but at least owning it on DVD, I can play with it. So that's pretty much all of the Wii channels that were available. Except the Wii Fit channel. You can install this through owning Wii Fit and it allowed you to weigh yourself and check your stats without putting the disc in. Mario Kart channel, same idea, installed through Mario Kart Wii, let you check in with your online stats without popping the disc in. Wii Speak channel, you can only download this through a download code offered after buying a Wii Speak. You could then talk to other friends with a Wii Speak. I only talk to people who own a Wii Speak anyway, so this was perfect for me. Jam with the Band Live channel, a channel only available in Europe and Japan for the DS game. Jam with the Band, it let you play the game's audio through the TV speakers. The Rabbits channel, a channel installed through Rabbits Go Home. It was like Check Me Out channel, but with Rabbits. You could post your rabbit and raid out the rabbits. It was fucking pointless. Netflix, Hulu Plus, YouTube, Amazon Video, Crunchyroll, even though this channel was available under Wii channels and instead was available under WiiWare. Metroid Prime 3 Preview Channel, which was only available for a limited time in loads of channels that weren't even close to releasing in my neck of the woods. Television Friend Channel G Guide, basically a TV guide developed by HAL Laboratory only in Japan. The Digicam Print Channel only in Japan, basically the photo channel, but through Fujifilm you could order prints of your photos. Today and Tomorrow Channel in Japan and Europe, some kind of fortune telling horoscopish stuff. We Know Ma Channel only in Japan, a video on demand service with exclusive content for Wii. The May Channel only in Japan, a channel that let you order real life food. BBC iPlayer Channel, Love Film Instant Channel, Kirby TV Channel, but of course, there was the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword Save Data Update Channel. There was a game-breaking bug found in the game, and since the Wii could barely even spell the word update, they had to release a Wii channel to fix this. For users that didn't have the internet, Nintendo would have them send their Wii system in, Jesus. Then there's the Wii U Transfer Tool for transferring your info from a Wii to a Wii U. <laughs> like, they had this cute Pikmin animation of them bringing your stuff over. It totally makes up for them never bringing over Demay. And that's pretty much every Wii channel. Sure, if you're playing on a Wii U, there's the Wii U Menu Channel. Takes you back to the Wii U menu and then there's the Wii menu manual channel but I, I don't take labeling anything as a Wii channel lightly. The Wii gave me hours of enjoyment even when I wasn't playing a game and I have these Wii channels to thank for that. Now how many hours in total? Oh my god. Me using the photo channel can finally drink!